The murder trial of Alec Murdoch continues in South Carolina. This has been an almost all day affair. We are going to get some reaction here from uh, the table. And I want to start with Judge Janine, of course. But before I do, can I just play three things that are significant and have you react to them and walk us through what actually happened today and how this plane is going to land? To steal a phrase. Okay, this is him earlier today. One of the first things he says when he denies killing time. the wife and son. Ever. Most of all, I'm sorry to Mags and Paul Paul. I would never intentionally do anything to hurt either one of them. Ever. Ever. Okay, and then there's another one, Judge, where he talks about lying to the cops. Let's get that one. Did you lie to Agent Owen and Agent Croft on the follow-up interview? I did lie to them. Did you lie to them t by telling them that you were not down at the kennels on that night? Yes. So why would he lie? This is what he said. Alec, why did you lie to Agent Owen, Agent Croft, and Deputy Rutland about the last time you saw Maggie and Paul? As my addiction evolved over time, I would get in these situations or circumstances where I would get paranoid thinking. All right, Judge, help us understand what we learned from that early part today. Okay, a couple of things. Uh, in this case, Murdoch had to take the stand. The evidence is stacked against him. Uh, but the issue was, how do you personalize a monster? They put him on the stand. He's one of the best witnesses I've ever seen on a witness stand. He's had a lot of reason to react to the pit bull DA here, and he hasn't reacted. But let's talk about his saying, sorry to Mags and Papa, I didn't intentionally uh, uh, murder, uh, or whatever the actual hurt statement you. is. Yeah. I didn't intentionally murder uh, anything or to hurt either one of them. Right. Okay, so why does he use the word intentionally? Well, you could say he's a lawyer. You could say he's speaking in terms of how the indictment is written. Murder is an intentional crime. But it is prefaced with, uh, I am sorry uh, to Mags and Paul. All right? That means that he's basically admitting to them, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't intentionally do anything to hurt you. What he is doing there is brilliant. He is creating the premise for a down charge. That means that even though he's charged with intentional murder, there is evidence when the defense goes in to have a discussion with the judge about what the jury will be charged, the, the, the defense will say, we want manslaughter in there. And the judge will say, there's no evidence of manslaughter. Defense will say, yes, there is. He said he didn't intentionally hurt either one of them. So that was a very big moment in the cross-examination. Now, he had to admit the lies. He had to admit it which is the same reason he had to take the stand. There is corroboration of virtually everything that puts him at the scene, puts his voice on at the scene. The jury has no question other than that guy did it. So they personalize this monster. They have him on there. When you listen to the 911 call, it sounds like he's in tears. Then you look at him, he's in tears. And you say to yourself, well, you know, the truth is maybe he's not so bad. The prosecutor is coming across as a pit bull, which is good, except this guy knows exactly how to handle the prosecutor. Oh. All right. So. I'm screaming. Yeah. What's going on there? Yeah, it's like the pit bull is going after him right that? there. Tyrus, um, your thoughts today as you watch this? You've, um, it's been enjoyable to listen to the commentary off camera. Yeah, well, I'm not repeating that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I look at this and, and the pit bull, as you call him, uh, he was leaning to the side with his hand in his pocket. That was, that was pretty powerful to me. Like, he was all up in his space. And that's yep. when, you, uh, when you're trying to razzle someone, you're trying to mess with somebody, you get in their space. Classic waters move as we preface it, something that Jesse does with some of his investigation. You know, uh, I'm kind of old school. I'm Before I pass judgment, I'm going to wait and see what the jury has to say. Because really, what he's doing is I think he's trying to just reach one juror. Okay. And by giving the, the pawpaw and giving the names and trying to be human and admitting that he's a lot of things, he's a liar, he's a drug addict, he's all these things, but he's not a killer. And I think... Uh, He's doing, I hate to say it, but he's, he's, doing, a good he's job. doing a good job of it because he had me going, well, man, damn, I mean, maybe, who knows, but really? I'm not in the jury. Yeah, sorry, Pierce, yeah. What do you think, Pierce? 
Well, you want to know how the plane lands? In my estimation, <laughs> guilty as charged. He, I've just spent last week in preparation to work with Jesse. I went down to <laughs> in went, space, Jesse. I went the down to I went to Texas and Missouri to go into maximum security prisons and interview serial killers. Uh, it just got me in the right <laughs> frame of mind for working with him. Um, and I've done a lot of these in a, for a series coming on Fox Nation later in the year. So I spent a lot of time ac across psychopath liars, and he's a psychopathic liar. This guy is the George Santos of psychopaths. He did this. I think he didn't just kill the wife and the son. He also killed the housekeeper. She just accidentally fell over and died? Come on. Uh, this guy is a serial killer, and he's maybe doing a good job on the stand, but you cannot tell me, Terrence, you are one of the smartest people I know in America. You're falling for this? No, I'm not. I, I love to watch narcissists work. They always try to outsmart everyone, and I, and I enjoy watching that. What I am trying to say is the one thing that bothers me is everyone always comes out guilty, guilty during the process, and then yeah. lo and behold, one juror finds a reasonable doubt, and then all hell How do you explain... Loose. Look, just take the WhatsApp video alone. That's it, to me. He's there. He's there right when this all happens, and then he lied about it. That, but why did you have to go any further? Well, I believe he is there. I believe he's oh. politely trying to say he was high all the time. I that's, think that's not what, well, he's that as well. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's pretending Does he was that on, yeah. prove to you beyond a reasonable doubt that he killed them because he was there? At what point it was it he there? It proves that he has lied through his back teeth and he admitted about it. being there when this all went down, which says to me, along with all the other evidence, he'd just been told he was up to his neck in financial sleaze, he was going to have the book thrown at him, he had all this other stuff going on, he's lied to every single person but he's ever been with. If he's going to have the book thrown at him, why kill your wife? Well, I don't know the precise motive for why he kills his wife and son. And that's the issue. I agree. Is it life that insurance policy? Because that's what happened I think, on murder she wrote. I think that's the did, most reality. He one. did not have an insurance policy on her or the son. Let me tell you the reason. Go on. The reason is the wife had seen a matrimonial attorney six weeks before. And talk about a perfect storm. They would get a forensic accountant and then all of his crimes would come out. If he gets rid of the wife in a matrimonial, then... You're, and you're in no doubt that he did it, right? I have no doubt. Right. And then, right before we came on, Jesse, the pit bull prosecutor was going through the financials and saying, did you take this money? Did you borrow this money? And he's talking about the habit that he had, his opioid habit, um, and there were millions of dollars that he was not just borrowing but stealing. So Mr. Waters, no relation, is trying to establish that this guy <laughs> is conniving, he is heartless, He's manipulative, and he's methodical, and he will steal from children, even. And the fact that you would do that shows what he's capable of and shows his motivation. He is a greedy guy, so they're trying to establish ruthless greed. And for someone that's been following this trial <laughs> from the very beginning... <laughs> Of the afternoon. <laughs> I am impressed by this psychopathic serial killer, and if that makes me a bad person, so be it. His posture on the stand is perfect. Mm -hmm. He is leaning forward. He looks sad. He's unflappable, and he's taking just enough issue with the prosecution to make him look aware of his dark history, but not too aware. So he's creating the perfect amount of haze and fog so he doesn't have to go into too much but detail. But don't you think, listen, to so use... The, and I think he's guilty. Right. To use the George Santos analogy one more time, Santos, when I interviewed him on Monday, admitted to a series of lesser lies because he knew it was incontrovertible. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to think he's a little fibber, not a massive Dick whopper right. perpetrator. But, in fact, he's a massive whopper perpetrator. This guy wants us to think, look, I'm a bad guy... I fiddle with money, I rip everybody off, I lie to everybody, but I could never kill someone. Remember, he's a lawyer. They want me to, play, call call for number four. They want me to play call for number four and get the okay. judge's reaction. This is about the, whether he changed clothes. Remember what you changed into? Do I remember? Yeah, yeah. I know I changed clothes, and I, I've, I've learned since then what I had on, but I don't... You don't remember? Okay. I don't remember that at all. But I understand I had on athletic shorts and a T-shirt. All right, Judge.
Convenient, number one, convenient. <laughs> you don't remember, that That way he doesn't have to answer. What he had on should have blood spatter on it, and that's where they were going with that. I don't know what clothing that is or whether or not they have that clothing, but I want to I want to say one thing to you about lying. Yeah. As a judge, I would say to the jury, you are free if you believe the defendant has lied about one thing to assume he's lied about everything. Mm -hmm. But you cannot make the jump from a, a non-credible witness to a murderer. But you can assume, once he takes a stand, that he lied to you about what he said right. and what he did. Yeah. I have a quick question. One of the things he did that I think is particularly clever, he would not implicate his partner. Yes. He kept saying, I did it on my own. My partner had nothing to do with it. He right. was an honest guy. I, so he's yeah. literally sh trying to show, like, he's a lot of things, and at the same time, he still has integrity. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. what he's trying Like, my, you know, I yeah. think that goes a long way. because he he's, does. He's not taking it. It's like, wow, if he's willing to take the rap for this and not yeah. spare his partner who apparently they also made money. They want us to Russell return Lafitte. to the yes. trial, so we will do that, and maybe you'll see us again. Watch out. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.